Ride One Up continues to blow my mind when it comes to value priced electric bikes, and I'm going to show you why in this full review of the brand new Prodigy V2. I'm going to talk about everything you need to know in this review, walk you through all the components, take you through some first person riding footage, and finally a conclusion. Should you buy this bike, yes or no? I'm even going to walk through how you might want to outfit this electric bike, but first, let's take a closer look. What a beautiful looking electric bike. I'm Ryan from eBike Escape, and before we get started, if you are looking to purchase any Ride One Up model, we would appreciate your support by using our affiliate link down in the description before you make your purchase. It's a free and easy way to help support the channel and keeps us reviewing awesome electric bikes like this one. Thank you so much for your support. Now, what makes this bike special is firstly, the Broza German engineered mid-drive motor paired with an internally geared hub from Enviolo. And lastly, and perhaps my favorite thing about this electric bike, is it is belt drive. The version you see here of the V2 is priced at $26.95, and they also have a chain drive version available for $23.95. Given this is a V2, there is a previous generation, and those are going to be continued to be sold, and they're available at an even more affordable price. Check out our reviews of the first generation Prodigy if you're interested, and also check out our reviews of all of the Ride One Up models because they are the best in the business when it comes to value priced electric bikes. Like many of the other models in the Ride One Up lineup, there are two different frame variations. This is the high step model in a really awesome looking matte black. It's also available in a step through. And my recommendation is if you are at all considering the step through, just go with it. The increased accessibility is well worth it. And a bike that you can get easily on is one you're going to ride even more. You'll notice high quality components throughout this bike, but that all starts in the front with these Tektro Orion four piston hydraulic disc brakes paired with 180 millimeter rotors. The versatility starts with the tires, 27 and a half by 2.25 inch wide tires. They have tread on them, so you can certainly take them off road. And the ability to take this bike off road is furthered by the air suspension fork, 100 millimeters of travel with lockout on the right side. Here's what you can expect out of that front suspension. Commuters will love the front and rear metal fenders that hug the tires nicely. Ride One Up's new badge on the front of the head tube. They've done a little bit of cable management in the front, and there's an always on front headlight. Matching Tektro Orion brake levers. These are very comfortable ergonomic Velo locking grips. On the right is the Enviolo twist shifter stepless shifting system. More on that in a bit. The minimalistic display can be hard to see in bright sunlight. Power button on the top. On the left hand side, we have battery capacity. The lights turn on automatically when you turn the bike on. Pedal assist levels in the top right hand corner, off, eco, tour, sport, and boost. Current speed, front and center. On the bottom of the screen, we currently have displayed trip. Pushing the left button will change that. Trip time, average speed, max speed, odometer, cadence, average cadence, max cadence, power, average power, max power, range, time, and back to trip. Holding the left hand button will get you into some advanced settings, including trip information, reset, and some other settings within the display. And this is how a six foot tall rider fits on this electric bike. Easy to get full leg extension. Battery integrated into the down tube. First, we need to remove the cover plate, pull down. This keeps the battery protected. Keys are on the right side of the bike. Turn the keys to the left. There's a small metal release on the right side of the battery. Push that, battery pops out. This is a 36 volt. 14 amp hour battery for a total of 504 watt hours. And it fits perfectly in our bike case, flame resistant and waterproof bag. It's a roll top bag. This is perfect for at home storage or when you're on the go and the bike is on your rear rack. Battery has a button to give you an idea of the current capacity. 
and the battery can be charged both inside the bike and out. There's the port here. Comes with a two amp charger. To put the battery back, make sure you're putting the terminals in first. Snaps into place. Don't forget the cover. Ride One Up includes a nice accessory box, complete with beanie, a higher quality than most Allen set, maintenance grease, as well as a couple wrenches, and of course you have the keys. And be sure to reference your manual as well. Minimalistic Ride One Up branding throughout. At the heart of the bike is the Broza Mid-Drive German-engineered 250-watt motor. Stay tuned for the first-person riding footage. It comes with Welgo metal pedals, a rear-mounted kickstand, as well as the Broza speed sensor mounted here and reads the wheel speed right here. Metal fenders in the rear. The rear rack is very sleek looking, but also is functional, pairs very well with our panniers. There's a window on the top of the bike and the integrated bright rear light is integrated right into the rear of the rack. The bike comes with this Cella Royale saddle. Now for my favorite feature, the internally geared hub. No, that is not a motor. So check this out. When I use the twist shifter, that's moving and changing the gears in the NVLO internally geared hub. And that's paired with a Gates carbon belt drive that might not need maintenance until you have 20,000 miles on this electric bike. There's a look at the front chain ring, two sets of bottle cages. So we know this bike looks amazing and it has some high quality components, but more importantly, how does it perform on the road? Let's get into some first person riding footage. I am so excited to walk you through how this bike feels, but first we've outfitted it with a bunch of accessories that are available at our shop at shop.ebikeescape.com. They're all of high quality and hydration only made possible, at least in this large of a water bottle by our Sidewinder case works really well in the top tube frame where you have limited access to top load a water bottle. All right, with that, we should take this bike for a ride. I have the speedometer app by Coolnix, which will give us the GPS speed. I'll be comparing that to the Broza display. This is a class three electric bike, so we should be able to get up to 28 miles per hour. No throttle on this mid-drive electric bike. And since we don't have gears, I'm just gonna have to talk through how the NVLO shifting about how much I'm twisting this in the various pedal assist levels. All right, here we go. I have it all the way shifted into its lowest gear. So the person is going up the hill and I do have it on Eco on the Broza display. And this is such a natural riding experience. It just gives you a little bit extra boost. And while I can help you a little bit and tell you about how this bike feels and rides, you should know that it is just so incredibly smooth. And that's of course made possible by the belt drive electric bike. If you haven't noticed, I just love belt drive, mid drive electric bikes. They're just so nice and easy to ride, low maintenance. In Eco, going about nine, 10 miles an hour, though I personally prefer a slightly slower cadence. So I'm gonna give this about, I don't know, an eighth turn, maybe even less than that. Make it a little bit more difficult for me to pedal. Nice leisurely cadence. Again, torque sensor, so it's measuring how much input I'm putting in and amplifying it. And so, yes, I'm going 10 miles an hour in Eco, but if I pedal a little bit more, I'm going to continue to go faster. And of course, I could twist shift up with the sepless and VLO shifting and going about 13 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and change the pedal assist to tour mode. And again, this is a very leisurely cadence, something I could do for a long time, 14 miles an hour, very easy. And of course, if I start pedaling harder, 16, 17 miles an hour. And again, I would turn the gearing a little bit higher. Let's go into sport mode. Very easily cruising at 16 miles an hour. Still got a lot of ways until we're in the highest gear on the NVLO internally geared hub. And if I put in a little bit more effort, I really can feel the motor boosting me even more in these higher pedal assist levels. 19 and Broza display pretty close, reading 20 and there's 20 on the GPS as well. All right, but boost mode, this is the most fun you're gonna have on this bike. I'm gonna shift into a slightly higher gear here, going 19 miles an hour, holding me there very easily. 
There's 20. Rosa display reading 21 at the moment. And of course, if I give it a little bit more, we're only gonna go faster. 23, I'm gonna shift a little bit higher as I take this turn. Okay, boost mode, I'm gonna start from a stop and we're just gonna see how close to that 28 miles per hour we can get. And I'm going to start twisting the shifter. 19, 20 miles an hour, GPS is slowly catching up. 23, and I gotta shift even higher. And this is gonna be a maximum effort. Rosa display, reading 27. GPS is showing 26. Rosa display reading, I saw 28. And there's 27 on the GPS. Let's do a brake test right here at this last tree. Try not to completely lock up that rear wheel. Check out that stopping power. I just shy of 28 miles per hour. So in boost mode, I'd say leisurely cadence, 19, 20 miles per hour. Should be doable for most people. And one thing that I really like about the step with shifting is I have a stoplight up here and I'm undoubtedly gonna have to stop. But in case I forget to shift down before I stop, you can do so and you don't have to worry. On normal derailers, of course, you don't wanna shift when the bike isn't moving. Not so with the NVLO CVTs. I'm gonna demonstrate that now right here. I didn't shift down at all, but I'm gonna to wanna to go make it easy for myself to get started. So just shift all the way down. All right, so that's how this bike performs on flat ground, but let's see how it does up our large hill climb test. All right, time for the hill climb test. This is the hill that I test out all the electric bikes that I review on the channel. So you can, can compare and contrast. The GoPro makes this hill look so much smaller than it is. So I'll throw a picture there on the screen as well as the specs. And out of these mid-drive bikes, what I'm personally looking for is just being able to shift into a low enough gear that really the, you can go up the hill with ease, perhaps conserve some battery as well. So right now I have it in Eco. If history is any indication, I'm probably gonna wanna go up to boost pretty quickly and yeah. Eco right here, and I'm putting in a good bit of effort, going about seven miles an hour, and I am in the lowest gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into tour mode. Don't feel too much relief there. Let's go ahead and go into sport, there we go. That's making it a little bit easier. But I imagine most people in circumstances like this are just wanting, going to want to cruise up a hill in boost mode. Right now, going seven miles an hour, and there we go, in boost mode, there's another noticeable difference. And if you can see my legs, they're spinning nice and easy. So I'd say on flat ground, gearing wise on this bike, you might not ever need to be in the highest gear, which is good. It's good to have more gears than you need. Maybe if you're cruising down a hill at 30 plus miles an hour, but you probably don't wanna be pedaling anyway and on the lower end gearing wise i find this sufficient being in the lowest gear i could maybe put in a little bit more effort here and shift it into slightly higher gear just a minor turn on the enviolo going about 10 miles an hour but overall the whole design of this bike it's meant to be pedaled. So you should expect that you're still gonna have to put in at least a little bit of effort to go up a hill such as this large one, though this is certainly an extreme case. All right, with that, let's get into some third person riding footage. I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Ride One Up Prodigy V2. If I was going to design an e-bike, it would look much like the Prodigy V2. 
mid-drive, belt-driven with an internally geared hub. And I'm fully aware from reading thousands of comments, seeing what videos are popular on the channel, and speaking to riders that this isn't everyone's idea of a dream e-bike. If you want a massive battery, super powerful motor, and a throttle, then this isn't it. Heck, I'd even recommend checking out Ride One Up's Rift or even the moped style Rev1 if that's your jam. The nice thing is there's an e-bike to fit anyone's wants and needs. But if you want a natural riding experience, thanks to the torque sensor with a nice amount of boost, then the Prodigy V2 is hard to beat with the German engineered Broza mid-drive motor. And I love that it's capable of class three speeds up to 28 miles per hour. We're going to focus on the belt driven version because it feels like an e-bike of the future, but those who prefer an old school standard chain and derailleur setup can check out the ST or XR priced at $23.95 decked out with micro shift components. The performance will be the same, you'll just have a traditional 9 speed shifter, it'll be a bit louder due to the chain, and yeah, it will need more maintenance over time, greasing the chain, maybe adjusting the derailleur, etc. Links will be down in the description so you can compare the models and also support the channel for free. The LX Step Over with CVT and the LS Step Through with CVT are $300 more at $26.95, which should tell you a bit about just how expensive an internally geared hub is from Enviolo. Plus you have the Gates carbon belt drive and the complexities of a cutout for the frame when eventually that belt needs to be replaced. These are premium features for sure, but just remember that these models are still coming in at about half the price of comps like the Serial 1 City Rush, priced at a whopping $5,600. Specialized also has various trims of the Turbo Vado IGH or internally geared hub, like the 3.0 at a non-sale price of $3,750 and the 5.0 at $5,500. How does Ride One Up achieve these lower prices? They're a direct-to-consumer brand that strives to provide the best value e-bikes, so when you compare their various models to others at the same price, you're almost always going to find them outfitted better. And the nice thing about the belt drive is it should be ready to ride without adjustment right out of the box. Of course, after minor assembly, the bike itself is about 85% assembled. Ride One Up has also recently doubled down on customer support, claiming to have one of the best response times in the industry today. So if you're on the fence, shoot their US-based support team an email, or I know this is shocking, but they have a phone number as well, 1-877-RIDE-1-UP. I'll keep tabs on the comment section, so help me and help others with your experience with Ride1UP in the comment section. Now we have focused a lot on the motor and drivetrain, but they certainly did not cheap out on the rest of the components. Four piston hydraulic disc brakes from Tektro, bright integrated front light and sleek integrated rear lights into the matching sleek rear rack. Name brand tan sidewalled Maxxis tires not only look great, but are capable of different types of terrain and a 100 millimeter air suspension fork adds to the versatility. Certainly nice to see that on all of the V2 models. The grips are even comfortable for long rides and the sturdy fenders don't feel or look cheap. The battery is about average at 36 volt, 14 amp hours, but Ride One Up's estimate of 30 to 50 miles seems pretty spot on. My only recommendation to those considering this e-bike is to strongly consider the step-through frame for the increased accessibility. And a reminder, if you're planning to purchase any Ride One Up model, please consider supporting our efforts by purchasing through our links in the description. My wife agrees the Prodigy V2 is a dream to ride with its smooth and quiet operation. Ride One Up is a brand that has been featured since the early days of e-bike escape and they continued to impress. This is not what I was expecting next from the company, but it's unquestionably a beautifully designed, premium looking e-bike. Considering what you're getting here, it's a great deal. Let me know what you think Ride One Up could have done better with this e-bike in the comment section below because honestly, I couldn't think of anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.